Mr. Klein here with our first of two lessons on this chapter on states of matter. The first lesson will be on describing the four states of matter. And then the second of the two lessons will be on how matter changes state through each of these four uh, states of matter. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, let's look at this picture. All right. Lightning streaking across the sky, things like that. What do you see? How many states of matter do you see? You see one, two. Three? Oh, a solid liquid gas. Well, what about that bright stuff right there, that lightning bolt? Well, that's actually the fourth state of matter, plasma. We actually have in this, uh, in this picture all four states of matter. The clouds, of course, being a gas. Of course, the air also. The ground being a solid. The rain falling a liquid. The lightning bolt being plasma. So in this picture right here, we have the four common states of matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and have a quick description of each of them. If you're by now in sixth grade, you kind of know what the states of matter are, and you kind of know what solids, liquids, gases are, but why, for instance, solids are solids, liquids are liquids, gases are gases, and plasmas are plasmas? Well, we're going to go over this with our first section. Now, why do we have them? Okay, like I said, you know matter can exist as either a solid, liquid, gas, or plasma, but for instance, why is the oxygen and the air a gas? The water we drink, a liquid, and the ice that keeps it cool, a solid. Well, the state of matter depends on the amount of energy the substance has. Okay? So the amount of energy the substance has dictates what state of matter it's going to be in. All matter in the universe can either be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Now, if you go more toward a high school, different states of matter uh, also depend on pressure. We talk about the difference with pressure and temperature and volume and things like that and the relationship between the three. But for our purposes in middle school, uh, physical science and chemistry, we're going to talk about the, uh, how the amount of energy impacts the state of matter. Okay? Particles are attracted to each other okay, naturally uh, through attractive forces. But the more energy the particles have, the faster they move and the harder they collide into each other. Okay? And the harder they collide into each other, the more force it hits. And as a result, they're able to overcome the attraction and they're able to spread out from there. So what happens is the slower they move, the less energy they have to escape this attractive force and the closer they stay together. So let's go ahead and let's look at this graphic right here. Okay? Uh, we have a solid, okay, you see they're all really close together. Liquid, okay, they're spread off a little bit more. Gas are all over the place, and plasma's all over, all over the place just like a gas, but something special happens, and it's ionized, and it's uh, particles with a charge. We'll, we'll get to that. But if you notice that when we move from solid to liquid to gas to plasma, heat or energy is added to it. So if we want to go from solid to plasma, we add heat. If we want to go from plasma back to solid, we have to take heat away from the substance. So the more energy you have, uh, the greater the state of matter is going to be. So let's go ahead and let's start going over these. And let's look over at the first one, a solid. The state of matter with the least amount of energy in its particles is a solid. Solids remain in this state because the force of attraction is greater than the energy of the particles. So what happens is that they vibrate in place. They just kind of bounce around. They don't really move too much. They don't move in terms of distance. Okay, it's like walking or running in place. Okay, they're moving, but they're not moving in any sort of direction or anything like that. They're not moving any distance. All solids have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. And there's two main types of solids we want to look at. The first is a crystalline solid. Crystalline solids form regular patterns of particles and they tend to break along lines. Okay, what we have in this picture right here is we have quartz. Okay, quartz is a crystal. The molecules that make up the crystal mi uh, mineral of quartz are arranged in a very regular pattern. As a result, wherever it breaks, it breaks along a flat line. And we see these flat lines in the crystal, as you can see there. Okay, you see how they go in corners and stuff like that. It's a nice repeating pattern. Okay, one of the things about crystalline solids is that their melting or boiling points are very definite. In other words, if we had this uh, quartz crystal right here, we put so much heat, it would stay a solid until it reached its melting point, and then at that temperature, it would melt suddenly, okay? So it stays a solid up until its melting point, and then it changes state, and it goes on from there. On the other hand, the other type of solids, what we call amorphous solids, they have no pattern of particles. 
so they can break into uneven shapes or whenever they condense into solids from liquids, they have irregular shapes. A good example is glass or candle wax. As you can see right here, uh, the candle wax, as it was flowing down as a liquid and as it cooled off, it formed irregular shapes. Amorphous solids don't have the structure of crystalline solids and as a result, uh, they can form more different shapes easily and also they tend to melt uh, continuously instead of having a particular melting point like crystalline solids. So go ahead and let's get our graphic organizer ready. We're going to have this chart right here, okay, uh, put in four spaces. First is solid. Well, things to know about solids, they have the slowest particle speeds, their particles vibrate in place, they have a fixed shape and fixed volume, and there's two types of solids. The crystalline solids have regular patterns, and amorphous solids have no pattern at all. Okay, so make sure you have that written down. And we will go and look at liquids. Okay, characteristics of liquids. Liquids are matter that has a fixed volume, but not a fixed shape. Particles in liquids have enough energy uh, that they can slide past one another. Okay, so they don't have that fixed shape but they can't pull completely apart. As a result, they have a fixed volume. In other words, you, if you pour one liter of water into a measuring cup, it will be the same liter that you poured into a one liter bottle. Well, however, they don't have a fixed shape. They will fit into whatever shape of container they fit in. Now, liquids have two interesting physical properties we're gonna look at. First one is surface tension. Surface tension is the force that pulls particles of a liquid toward other liquid particles. An example of this is when water beads up on a flat surface. Okay, and if we look right here, okay, uh, like I just said, surface tension, it pulls the particles at the surface. And if we look, this is an example of surface tension. This is a water droplet. And what happens is the molecules and the particles at the edges pull inward. Okay, as a result, they pull inward and the natural shape of pulling inward is a circle or a sphere which, by the way, that's why Earth is a sphere, okay, because of the center of gravity being at the core of the Earth. Everything is pulled toward it forms a sphere, okay? So that rounded shape is the surface tension, and it's the force of attraction pulling down on it. The other of uh, interesting characteristics of liquids is viscosity. Viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flowing. For some substances, viscosity depends on temperature, but other viscosity does not change depending on temperature. If a liquid has a high viscosity, it flows slowly, while liquids with lower viscosity will flow faster. Also, liquids with flow, low viscosity, are, you're able to move through them much easier as opposed to ones with high viscosity. As we can look at this uh, little animated video, I'm going to show you real quick. Okay, three clear liquids, three different viscosities. We're going to drop at one time a liquid, uh, I'm sorry, a ball into the liquid and watch what happens with different types of viscosity. Okay, the one on the left has low viscosity, the one in the middle moderate, and look at the high viscosity of the one on the right. So go ahead and get your graphic organizer ready as you see them float down again. Okay. Liquids. Liquids have faster particle speeds. The particles slide past each other. They don't have a fixed shape, but they do have a fixed volume. Surface tension curves liquid surfaces, and also viscosity is the resistance to flow. So go ahead and make sure you have all this information now. So we've talked about solids and liquids. And that means the next one we're talking about are gases. Okay, a gas is a matter that has neither fixed volume nor a fixed shape. Okay, particles and gases, if you remember, the force of attraction is beaten by the fact that the particles have so much energy from heat that they bounce into each other and fly off. Okay, so they have that energy to break free and they can move around. And gases always fill their container. And given time, they will have the same pressure. They'll settle and they'll, they'll equalize. Okay, gases along with liquids and plasma, uh, those three states of matter, we call f them fluids, okay, because they are substances that can move freely, okay? So fluids are substances that can move freely. Those are liquids, gases, and plasmas, okay? And what's interesting about gases, as you can see right here, this is Yellowstone National Park. Uh, you have water vapor coming up from a hot spring on a uh, cold winter's day. You see the clouds that are forming by water vapor, they are, they have no fixed shape. They have no real density because, no fixed density because they're, they're emanating. They're coming up from the water. 
And as a result, you have areas of high density, that's the, you know, the real cloud ones, and then lower density where you can't see it as much. So those molecules of water are just bouncing into each other with so much uh, speed and energy that they don't have time or ability to form a fixed volume. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's fill in our information about gases. Okay, gases have the fastest particle speeds of the three traditional uh, states of matter. Their particles can move freely, have no fixed shape, and no fixed volume. Okay, so you should have this by now. And so let's finally let's look at the fourth state, which you might have heard of but might not have heard of. And that's what we call plasma. It is the fourth state of matter. It's a state of matter that had the, resembles a gas, but has properties that gases do not have. For example, lightning and neon lights are an example of plasma. Yep, neon lights, just like that. Uh, the bright light that you see is the plasma inside the bulbs. So what makes plasma different than gas? Well, first, plasma can conduct electricity. And there's a particular reason for this. And because it can conduct electricity, as you'll learn later this year, it, talks about, uh, it responds to magnetism as well. Interestingly enough, it responds to magnetism like a metal, okay, where it can be attracted to or, or, uh, and move along with it. And under certain conditions, plasmas, you can manipulate them to form definite shapes like a solid. So in other words, it'll be a gas, but it whenever you put it under magnetic forces, it'll form structures a lot like a solid. Uh, and it also consists, rather than of molecules, but the particles are actually so heated and so supercharged that they end up separating from each other and becoming charged particles that we call ions, okay? And so the ions are attracted to each other because ions have a charge that allows for electricity and by extension magnetism to take place. So let's go ahead and let's finish off this graphic organizer. Plasma has similar properties to a gas, uh, really high particle speeds at a higher temperature than gases. They can conduct electricity. They're affected by magnetism. When they're affected by magnetism, they can form definite shapes when under that magnetic effect. And finally, they consist not really of particles as in atoms and molecules, but more of ions. Those are particles with a charge. So there you go. That's your lesson. We're talking about the four states of matter, solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. And remember, the state of matter depends on the amount of energy that the substance has. The more energy it has, the more it moves towards a liquid, gas, or plasma, the less it moves towards a solid. So there you go. That's your lesson. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.